Hello everyone, I'm JT the Dusty Dutchman and welcome to the Sportsman's Motel and Resort in Winchester, Wisconsin. So it's January in the North... So it's January in the North Woods and what takes place up here is what, in my opinion, is the most unique form of cycling and that is winter fat biking. Now, we really only get the opportunity to do this about three months out of the year, so when we do it, we try to take full advantage. Can't see anything out of these things. So today, we're gonna to share with you our recipe for the full winter fat biking experience, which we've broken down. So let's get started with step one of the five steps to winter fat biking. So for step one, we're here at the Windman Trails uh, to go over what's probably pretty obvious that for fat biking, you need a fat bike. Um, and you can get all sorts of different options, right? You can do carbon frames, you can do aluminum, you can do steel, uh, you can do full suspension, you can do <clears throat> no suspension, you can do front suspension. All that's all well and good, but all that really matters, it's all about the tires. So to be a fat bike, technically you need 3.8 inches wide tire at least, and then you can go wider from there depending on the type of trails you're riding. Now here at Windman, they groom the trails, which we'll get into later. But ultimately what that means is you don't necessarily need studs unless you're gonna be encountering uh, ice. So let's go take a look at what a groom trail looks like. All right, step number two to fat biking is, uh, since you got your bike, next step would be obviously, you need a trail to ride. You can ride anywhere, anywhere that has, uh, has snow that you can ride on top of, but we like it here because the scenery is beautiful and the trails are beautiful. All right, so we talked about uh, grooming earlier. Now, grooming is a process that you would see uh, just like at a ski resort, just like on a cross-country ski trail. After the groomer goes by, you get those nice, perfect corduroy ribs in the snow. Uh, well, they do that, the same thing on fat bike trails with specifically designed uh, equipment. Uh, what's yeah. nice about that is after uh, a lot of people ride and after the freeze and thaw over the course of days and nights, um, you end up getting all kinds of ruts and it gets icy, but once you run the groomer across it, then you're left with these beautiful trails that are smooth and fast and not typically icy, and it gives you the best experience. All right, step three. So you got your bike, you found some trails to ride. Now you go out and start riding some trails. Well, the first thing that normally ruins one of your first rides is cold hands and cold feet. So when it comes to the rest of your body, I kind of just go with the same theory I've always applied to being outdoors. Base layer, mid layer, top layer. Top layer, best thing about a top layer is it needs to be windproof and waterproof. And then depending on the temperature, because remember, you could be riding anywhere from 35 degrees all the way to below zero, which is a pretty big range. So you have to make some adjustments in the, the mid layers and the base layers, but you're always gonna wanna stick with some kind, of a, some kind of a shell. But when it comes to spending money, spend the money on good gloves and some good boots. Specifically, I would definitely recommend some, something with a hard sole. Typically, you're only gonna see uh, cycling specific footwear is gonna have a uh, solid sole, but that's gonna help you out quite a bit uh, in the long run. Joining me here is Jeremy, AKA Mountain Goat, who we ride with quite a bit. Uh, he's taken it to the next level and brought some tech into his riding gear, which isn't necessary, but you can yep. explain why you like it. Yeah, so anything when it goes to like 10 degrees or below, and I often ride when it's negative degrees, cause I like to come out first thing early morning, get those first tracks or do night rides, which are just totally awesome. But like 
what I recommend are heated socks for any kind of temperatures like that. Um, heated gloves for sure, you wanna get those. My wife's got them, she loves them. I'm gonna be getting myself a pair. Um, yeah, beyond that, you know, I'm also an XC skier, so a lot of what I wear is sometimes the same exact thing that I might wear on the ski trails. So if you're a skier, just know, like, ski, bike, you can wear the same thing and layer up that way. Yep, absolutely. So another thing in regards to your gear is your eyewear. And usually above 10 degrees, I wear uh, glasses. But once it gets into the sing single digits or lower, I like to wear goggles because it's a little warmer. Uh, but one thing to consider is definitely you want a dual lens because a single lens will fog up on you. And you don't want that. All right, step number four is ride with friends. Uh, now, can you do it alone? Of course, you can always ride your bike alone, but I think fat biking is the ultimate form of the social ride because it's a little lower speed, it's a little safer, um, so it really levels the playing field and allows for, I think, more people to get into it, more people that want to do it together, and you know, a lot of group rides get ruined by like, you know, uh, all it takes is one hot shot to blow up the group. But here, yeah, I mean, look, you couldn't pass anybody if you tried. There's nowhere to go. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. So with a recommendation from Jeremy and Destiny and only 1.2 miles down that road from the Windman Trails, this time around, we ended up at the Sportsman's Motel. So for those of us that have to travel a good distance to experience amazing trails like at Windman, step number five is lodging. Born in 1956 on the South Turtle Lake, the Sportsman's Motel has historically been a hotspot for uh, fishermen and snowmobilers. Uh, but recently under new management, uh, their goal is to try to expand the word sportsman to include anybody that enjoys outdoor activities. With the recent updates, inside you'll find a perfect blend of a few modernized amenities, some refinished original woodwork, and a stylish vintage vibe that is completely unique. So considering proximity to the trailhead, uh, an easy place to put the bikes, and having this warm, comfy, cozy place to come back to after a long day of riding, the Sportsman's Motel and Resort really does help to complete the full experience of fat biking. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our five steps to fat biking. Obviously, you don't have to do all five steps to enjoy fat biking, but we hope you found it entertaining. Uh, and don't forget to get outside, get on your bike, fat bike or not, because good things will happen. See ya. All right, team, this is it. Is everybody ready? No. Yes. Hard right. Hard got your right. drinks? Got your drinks? Hard right. Hard We're going hard right. Whoa! 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 Yeah! Oh, 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 oh! Oh, 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 big! Oh! Boom! <laughs> Nice job, everybody. Oh. <laughs>